Добрый день, дорогие друзья. Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm uh, happy to welcome you here at the Gaidar Forum, uh, which is a nice uh, discussion venue. Uh, we are discussing the most acute issues uh, facing our uh, country. First of all, we'd like to say thanks to the organizers, to our hosts and the team of uh, uh, RANIPA experts uh, that allowed us uh, for the 11th time to get together in this uh, beautiful venue. Today, uh, the subject of our discussion, I suggest that we discuss uh, the Snowden uh, syndrome. What is this syndrome about, uh, whether you can observe it in our society and the main difficulties uh, faced by Russia? Uh, in the course of interaction between the state, businesses, and the society, when in fact the state and businesses are actively developing the new information technologies, the pandemic uh, forced us to uh, implement uh, ever new digital services, which has changed the lives of our people, the country, which made our lives more comfortable. Uh, to some extent, but uh, people began to uh, <clears throat> feel certain concern uh, regarding uh, the data that are accumulated by the state, whether they are protected, and uh, uh, lest they be in the hands of uh, fraudsters. Uh, so it's quite an interesting discussion. Uh, we have here Alexander Hinstein, chairman of the State Duma Committee on Information uh, Technologies, Information Policies and Communications, and Anna Serebrenikova, president of the Big Data Association, deputy uh, CEO on digital projects uh, and uh, government relations of the uh, Yadro Group. So welcome, Alexander and uh, Anna. My first question uh, is quite simple, the Snowden syndrome. The syndrome is what uh, uh, we use when we would like to describe a disease or some ailments. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, do we have to treat this syndrome? My first question is to you, Alexander Ivsevich. Uh, is it possible to uh, uh, keep, uh, to protect uh, the privacy, the personal lives, and where is the boundary between the personal interests and the interests of the states? Uh, good afternoon. I'm happy to welcome everyone, although in this uh, uh, remote access and the distant uh, manner, uh, but thanks uh, anyway to the late Yegor uh, Gaidar for organizing this forum. So the question you ask me is not a simple one, uh, despite your uh, assessment, uh, because the boundary where the personal lives end uh, of a citizen, of a person ends, and where uh, the uh, jurisdiction of the state begins is quite uh, slim. There are certain things that uh, cause no doubt. So first of all, uh, the data information which is administered and uh, collected by uh, the state, by the, um, such as passport, for example, or the birth certificate, uh, the pension uh, number, uh, the diplomas on uh, higher or secondary education, uh, the uh, officers, uh, commissioned officers or non-commissioned officers, uh, documents, uh, reserve officers. So this is, these are the kind of documents which are administered by the state. But it is not by chance that I've listed all these documents here. But um, anyway, all these documents uh, today um, accepted um, and uh, are, um, approved as the norm uh, standard documents and the new uh, register and the new law on information uh, um, for the people which um, uh, has been, uh, um, been uh, 
in effect for some time and there were heated debates around this uh, because uh, people were concerned that it may, they may interfere in their personal lives. Um, so the things that I've just uh, mentioned uh, in the information register, registry, the are provided by the state, uh, such as the birth certificate, the passport, or the uh, um, military uh, uh, <coughs> commission uh, documents. Uh, uh, well, of course, we were. There are all kinds of uh, measures uh, that can be applied by the state, such as. Uh, strengthening responsibility and so on and so forth. That's uh, as regards these uh, functions performed by the state. The uh, obligations uh, of the state before their citizen. But uh, what follows uh, is a kind of a debatable uh, point, and uh, I will listen to my colleague uh, with great interest from the uh, Big Data Association, because we have a serious uh, disagreements, I should say, what we should do and how we should handle uh, other types of data uh, which are voluntarily supplied, submitted by people to the banks, uh, to cell operators, to the network marketplaces, uh, chain marketplaces, and whether this data can be transformed into a commodity. The position of our committee is absolutely uh, solid and uh, uh, clear, so unless there is a full uh, understanding, full conviction that the data, that these data this are uh, anonymous and, uh, uh, and it is impossible to uh, disclose them later, um, we cannot talk, even talk about the uh, submission about the supply of big uh, data. And uh, it is not accidental that uh, we have uh, um, submitted a proposal on uh, uh, the work with big data. So there were debates and discussions last year uh, that uh, biometric data uh, um, uh, of course, the cell operators, uh, when, when they argued about these uh, data banks, but our position was a bit different. The president made it quite clear that only the state has the right to administer the uniform biometric uh, system. So talking about the commercial uh, structures, banks uh, where uh, this private biometric data have been accumulated, they have to be submitted to the state, ensuring its uh, absolute safety, confidential character, so that the uh, owners of uh, n they will have no uh, access to uh, this data, to the data of uh, the relevant owners. Well, there are other data, the so-called light biometric data, but we are not talking about this right now. So today, taking into account the breakthrough development of uh, digital technology in our lives, in all spheres of our existence, uh, the question of personal data uh, protection uh, is uh, in the center is especially acute. Last year, we uh, 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 were working on sanctions against uh, uh, those who compromise data. And uh, there are data which are necessary for the state. As for other data, such as, for example, on health condition, on uh, different movements of uh, personal movements, uh, uh, preferences, personal life. So these data, um, not only biometric data, but uh, also uh, uh, regarding face, uh, hair, or whatever is used for this biometric data, uh, should be fully at the disposal of uh, an individual, whether he wants uh, to uh, that somebody else to use them or not. So that should be the right of the owner of this data.
Sorry uh, for a long uh, present uh, speech. Uh, thank you, Alexander Evsevich. Uh, I've made a few notes here. Um, Anna Andreevna, well, in fact, uh, I've just um, uh, written your uh, a quote from your uh, interview last year um, about the quality data for the development of uh, AI. Today you're here in a um, quite a complicated uh, role as you represent the entire community, all the companies that are part of your association. So in fact, this kind of uh, statement uh, may cause some concern um, sound uh, like uh, not uh, a direct uh, threat, of course, uh, with a, a plain person, a, so to say, man in the street. Can you comment on that? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, delighted to be here uh, on the, uh, uh, at the Gaidar Forum. And I'm um, really be happy to uh, talk to a uh, highly esteemed person uh, such as Alexander Evsevich Hinstein. Uh, let's start with what he has just ended. What we would like to do, we would like the citizens to uh, dispose of their data, to handle their data, conscious, uh, being conscious of them, responsibility. Uh, so just talk about responsibility, why we are setting up data servers, why we are uh, trying to fight fraudsters, and why it is so important to think about the Snowden syndrome. So we have to focus on, first of all, on first uh, the citizens, uh, people must understand who they give their data to. Uh, B, they under should understand that uh, they should be protected, and C, uh, they should be able to process and work with this data how they think fit. So in your uh, example, whether they want to get a targeted um, advertising or um, uh, some beneficial uh, mortgage uh, rate, and so on and so forth. If you look at this slide, this slide, uh, what people think about data collection and whether they are capable of understanding what happens to this data. So the, we see here is quite a, a difficult uh, picture, I should say. We just as business, well, perhaps uh, we have not uh, uh, explained to our citizens uh, in a clear-cut manner how we collect data, how we protect this data, and how the personal data are different uh, uh, from uh, anonymous data uh, from the state systems, and so on and so forth. And uh, what is the people's attitude towards uh, this, uh, that for the state and for the business that they have chosen as their partner, their lives become more transparent. So the first message, 42% of Russian people believe that uh, it's in uh, fact impossible to uh, preserve this data, to protect them fully, uh, to ensure full uh, data security. Well, at least you can see if half of all Russian people think that it's impossible uh, to keep this data uh, safe. But in the meantime, they are not so uh, afraid of this. You know. 26 percent of respondents believe that the data accumulated by the state, collected by the state, are uh, uh, accumulated to an exercise control over people, not negative. Uh, implication here, uh, which means that if uh, the state is trying to control uh, something, they, they should fight against it. No, this is not so. So there's a positive uh, uh, experience from the Gos Uslugi portal, uh, the chance to get uh, quick access to information, to documents, and so on and so forth, which makes it possible for people to say that all these initiatives are uh, targeted to make people's uh, lives uh, easier. But this, so this control does not have any negative implication, and the people are ready to welcome this. 
And besides, the people understand that it helps uh, uh, the government to fight uh, uh, criminals, to fight uh, against crime. So you know that uh, uh, in this uh, context, uh, um, they cannot do this. Uh, they cannot engage in this fight without digital uh, research. On the right-hand slide, you see that there about 80 percent of people are not uh, aware enough uh, or do not have enough information on uh, data. So uh, we are just exchange uh, different types of uh, frightening messages uh, instead of this, uh, instead of uh, knowing exactly how these data are protected or how they are destroyed. And this is the work that our association will be doing a lot. Uh, we've got a PR project where we explain using simple text what is the big data, why is it so important to work with impersonified data and uh, not with the personal data, why is it important for big business and why is it important for people, why should they share their personal data. And uh, also, I would like to say that our legislation on personal data is a good legislation because it's stable, but it's a little bit obsolete because uh, the number of consents that uh, have present our uh, citizens, um, it's very high, it's inadequate, and uh, we should reduce the number of such consents. I would like to put an example. I came to exchange my passport to renew it, and they asked the consent for the uh, police department to process my data to give me the passport, and uh, it's quite funny. I go to uh, one window center to exchange my passport. Well, uh, I present my uh, application. There is no need of such a consent, and uh, the uh, this practice isn't correct, and uh, we should correct it. And because it, the only thing that it gives to us is some irritation, we have to give more explanation to raise awareness to elaborate uh, more precise ways of applying the existing legislation and uh, those are the uh, ways that I offer to cure this problem. Uh, thank you very much, Anna. I would like to go deeper into discuss an issue which is with us here right now. I'm speaking about pandemia. We are waiting for a new strain for a growth of uh, diseased people. And from the beginning of the pandemia, the state goes gathering a huge number of data which uh, wasn't gathered before because we all mm, were confined at home with uh, coronavirus. We all uh, obtained our QR code. And there was a, a trend uh, of giving access to the IT specialists, to the who work on uh, inter uh, artificial intelligence, access to big data for, uh, for um, teaching the artificial intelligence on this big data. And uh, judging by analytics, many people are preoccupied by this trend. You're asking me now? Yeah. Well, I'd say that the um, data gathered by the state, uh, well, we shouldn't give access to the data to anybody except for the state, and we cannot use it for uh, reasons um, different from the original ones, but the processed data or segregated data can be very useful for the development of artificial intelligence systems. They can be very useful if they're processed and treated well. And afterward, I would like to uh, give you more detail on 
in personification of uh, data and the possibilities of use of such data in uh, artificial intelligence uh, programs. I believe that here it is very important to cooperate with professional actors of this market, uh, people who know how to work, how to prepare data uh, sheets for um, such systems without transforming them in purely statistical data on the one hand and on the other hand, uh, preventing the use of such data for legal purposes. I also would like to respond to Alexander. He um, wants to be sure that um, there will not be an irreversible uh, personification of data, but there is no mathematical way to guarantee it. And I think that this is a wrong approach. Nobody can guarantee the um, irreversible impersonification of data. So here we have to appreciate, to evaluate the risks, uh, the benefits and the disadvantages of the use of such big data. We just have to work on correct elaboration of data sets. Alexander, I would like you to answer one question. You said that the state has to regulate the work with data, especially when it uh, has to do with the data of citizens of the country. And is there any possibility for auto regulation because the data volume is big? And many representatives of um, business of our country, they say that there are many uh, things that can be auto-regulated. What do you think about it? Yes, it's possible, and uh, it's more it's permitted by the law in many fields. Uh, for example, um, any citizen can uh, retrieve his uh, consent for data processing in social networks. We have amendments for law which regulate the um, social networks. They have to monitor the content and uh, delete from there the um, prohibited content and there is a special mechanism for them and for Roscomnadzor to evaluate the content and to say whether it's prohibited or not. And we always applaud the auto-regulation, but it cannot substitute the state control or state supervision. Uh, and the faculties that the regulators have uh, Ministry of uh, Figures and um, uh, those competences, they have nothing to do with auto-regulation, but we understand that the digital technologies, they came here to stay. We have to regulate digital environment, internet, and uh, we have to invent to elaborate new regulation, which will be similar to the regulation in our real life. And we are waiting for positive steps from behalf uh, on behalf of the uh, IT industry, but the state also has to act. And uh, I would like to disagree with Anna. And without long um, dispute, uh, I would like to comment. Uh, she said that nobody can guarantee uh, that the data won't be impersonified. That's, that means that a big data which was analyzed and then transferred to another industry, well, nobody can guarantee that they can be deciphered and uh, recomposed. Well, I don't think so. As I know, the Big Data Association, which you represent, uh, last year uh, celebrated an agreement with uh, Cryptography Academy. And uh, within the framework of such agreement, you are looking for a solution 
uh, of this task. And I don't understand why uh, you sign this agreement if you believe that it isn't possible. Uh, the anchor mentioned also the decree of president and the president ordered to uh, find a mechanism of uh, transfer of such impersonified data and uh, that uh, order uh, says that those data should be protected. So, dear colleagues, uh, we should, when you say that we should calculate uh, what is more important, the risks or the benefits, uh, we disagree with this approach because there is, an, uh, there is a decree from the president and uh, it implies the guarantee of uh, privacy and of uh, consistence of the personal data. Otherwise, we won't support those amendments to the legislation. That's from my behalf and on behalf of my colleagues uh, of uh, committee. As to the level of consent, we are ready to analyze them, but I don't think that uh, those consents provoke such an irritation. You have to sign three papers, to three documents to receive uh, this new passport. And you also can do it at distance and uh, then receive the document physically. And as to the irritation and uh, negative emotions of our citizens, they are provoked mostly by the insecurity, this feeling of insecurity of their private data. And when uh, business says that uh, this personal data, uh, if we make easier their transfer, it will help to reduce uh, interest rates for uh, credits and uh, other privileges. But I would say that there are uh, both positive and negative moments, and our main task as a state of business, of scientific society, civic society, is to find a unique approach um, to defend, to protect our citizens and work on this approach. As to the impossibility of cal mathematical calculation, I meant uh, EBS is a unique geometrical system which, uh, as committee, committee said, we were to have in the hands of the state. Business for, uh, for um, such systems in uh, private structures like banks, and they did it. And I, I won't comment on how it was done, but today we have a new law and I'm very glad because I was one of those who introduced those amendments. Uh, when we uh, spoke about the future of uh, those databases that banks have, for example, so we understood that today there is a mechanism which protects with 100% uh, security the protection of the data because this uh, data for visual biometry, they uh, give you the possibility to identify the person, but you cannot see the complete image. It's like a lemon juice, which cannot be made lemon again. But a commercial bank can use those data for face ID technologies and specialists during the discussions. Uh, they worked with the Cryptography Academy, with another entities, and they uh, said us that today it's impossible to recompose, um, based on those data, of the image, the face of a person. And the banks will have this possibility, they will have this data, and big impersonified data. Uh, well, today we, we we aren't sure that there is no way to recompose them back, and we have to protect the rights of our citizens. And I'd say that today digital rights is more than a trend, and 
we really just don't understand what dangers, uh, what challenges we will have in this way. We don't know the changes uh, that uh, will leave the cybercrime. Um, and we do investigate them. Uh, but the main threat is that uh, about 27% of all the crimes in Russia so on crimes with the use of um, IT technologies, theft of theft and fraud. And those crimes usually happen with the use of stolen data because they, when they call to the victims, they receive those data from uh, commercial systems, from other systems where they gather the data. The priority is the rights of the citizen and digital sovereignty, just as the digital sovereignty of the country. Alexander Yevsevich, uh, that was a serious uh, speech, of course. Uh, now, just uh, a few slides uh, about uh, dark net. Uh, we have some statistical data. If you look at the slide, uh, you can see that it's mainly a data leak. Uh, as uh, you mentioned, this already are due to internal uh, violators. So this is a human factor, uh, in fact. And in reality, we, we see there's uh, the, uh, a large amount of uh, commercial data uh, uh, leak uh, and uh, compromised. Um, so Anna Andreevna said that you have some materials as you were preparing for this debate. Can you comment on this, please? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, indeed, uh, first, uh, I think we should uh, wrap up the discussion regarding uh, possibility and impossibility of impersonification of personal data. The methods that we're working on uh, on uh, impersonal uh, data, they uh, give us uh, huge opportunities, but they do not uh, warrant, give us a 100% uh, guarantee that uh, we can ensure uh, total protection and total security. So if you use the digital capacities in our country, you, of course, you would be able to find the uh, traces of a certain personality. But if our task is to use a reasonable means so as to make this uh, impersonification uh, possible. The, but the very attempt of impersonification is an important way that will seriously uh, limit uh, some uh, criminal actions. So that's where we actually uh, mitigate this risk. So we have to, to do everything in our power to prevent uh, impersonifying uh, data from per uh, being personal data. So in a great number of cases, we don't need uh, to know the personal data of a specific uh, person, individual. He needs to know. He needs uh, to know the behavioral modes of uh, different groups of people. As for the Cryptographic Academy, we are preparing a mathematic, uh, mathematical model uh, which implies that the risks uh, will be minimized as we combine technical and organizational uh, means. Uh, we can uh, then uh, state that the such risks uh, will be actually down to zero. So we are doing this job, and so we are ready to share the results of this activity with you. As regards uh, fraud, uh, we as uh, association are insisting on this. Uh, so apart from a ban on uh, collection data and the consent of citizens, these are really important mechanisms. We are not going away from that. They will continue to be part of our lives. However. We have to pay special attention to how we are, are going to deal with impersonified data. Here is a slide uh, regarding the practices of uh, um, uh, counteracting uh, fraud. Um, so we can uh, talk in more detail about this, but 
to uh, uh, facilitate our discussion, the next slide uh, will tell us how we should work with impersonified uh, data in which situations uh, it is possible to handle impersonal data. So the question, reg uh, question regarding the medical data is a, a highly complicated ethical issue. But on the other hand, we understand that we cannot allow ourselves to lag behind the world community. Uh, so we need to uh, provide data to uh, AI uh, developers. If we uh, store uh, data in impersonal format uh, for commercial purposes, uh, so the uh, theft of such data related, for example, to a specific uh, well-known personality. We can also minimize the risks uh, that uh, data for certain categories are sensitive data, such as uh, income, uh, uh, commercial secrets, banking uh, secrets, uh, will be useless to fraudsters because they would not lead them to a specific person. But if we talk about uh, talking about cases where databases uh, have been compromised uh, on as a whole or partial. Uh, if such a database has been protected and we have impersonification mechanisms applied to it, this is also going to be useless for fraudsters because they have no means to uh, disclose this data. So the uh, unified enriched data sets uh, will uh, never uh, provide an opportunity for fraudsters uh, to get back to uh, a specific person. Now, let me repeat once again, uh, for businesses, maybe 90% of cases, the uh, personality of uh, some uh, citizen is not that important, but rather uh, his preferences, uh, his uh, specific uh, priorities, interests, uh, um, <clears throat> and pursuits are more important. So, so we believe that the impersonification subject should be mathematically tested and uh, agreed upon with you. That will be for the benefit of the society. Thank you, Anna Andreevna. Well, in fact, I'll try to pull you out uh, of this discussion a little bit regarding impersonal or personal data, it's only seven minutes left, uh, so let's talk about children a little bit. It's quite an interesting subject indeed, and we all of us understand that children are uh, poorly protected, uh, there's a very weak protection in the internet, there is so-called cyber bullying, uh, so the trend, uh, the such risks are uh, increasing uh, uh, every day, as far as I understand, your association is working on certain initiatives uh, to protect such unprotected uh, layers of the population as children. So can you uh, tell us uh, a little bit on uh, that? And then we'll ask to comment on state initiatives. Uh, Mr. Kinstein will tell us about this. Now, as regards uh, uh, protection of children, of course, we are involved in all projects related to education. Um, uh, we are trying to provide uh, explanations to uh, children how they should uh, behave. Uh, uh, I think you probably it's a bit confusing because there are special courses uh, which um, are dealing with this, but our uh, mm, uh, task is uh, mostly about uh, education and, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> sort of contributing to the literacy of uh, children who are working in, uh, who are dealing with internet. Yes, yeah, just uh, talking about the cyber culture for uh, the uh, younger generation. Alexander Evsevich, from the uh, viewpoint of the government, what initiatives are have been undertaken or are under consideration in this uh, context? So we believe that the earlier uh, work uh, that was started by the committee uh, will uh, continue 
And of course, we're talking about uh, uh, the introduction of educational standards, uh, such as um, digital hygiene or digital literacy. So these subjects uh, must be introduced in the uh, school curriculum. Uh, but of course, the school students should get some uh, models of uh, safe behavior. It's not only about cyberbullying, uh, but uh, children, as uh, you know, people generation with unstable uh, mindset, um, that do not have some moral uh, orientation so far, they are uh, become quite a comfortable victim for different types of uh, fraudsters, such as pedophiles, for example, and the people uh, who set up different death uh, groups and so on and so forth. Those are propaganda uh, on non-traditional values or aggressive uh, forms. Um, unfortunately, this is a kind of threats uh, faced by people not only in Russia. So the problem we are discussing are universal. Uh, experienced by all the countries, uh, except for countries where uh, which do not have uh, free internet access. Any country with free uh, free internet access uh, suffer from this and trying to uh, address this problem. So, so one of the components here is, for, of course, prophylactic measures in education uh, and enlightenment. And the other component is uh, tough and uh, stringent regulation so as to prevent such content from uh, uh, dissemination. Um, uh, I'm not going to list all the initiatives that we undertook last year, but I would like to say that this work is going to be uh, carried out uh, further so that the Internet could be a safe place for everyone. Thank you. And we have just a few minutes, um, and I wanted very briefly, please, uh, both speakers to draw the uh, bottom line, uh, just one minute to each. What exactly has to be done to comply, uh, to stick to the parity uh, between the state and the businesses and the citizens and the subjects? Yes, uh, okay, I think uh, that uh, first, uh, uh, and foremost, uh, uh, that uh, we have already expressed our <clears throat> consent that uh, that must be a kind of a common approach uh, by the state and the businesses, which uh, implies uh, more clear cut and uh, more transparent explanations <coughs> why uh, the data are collected and what kind of uh, value it may bring to the people and to the society. These figure that 80% of the population do not understand the difference between different types of data. Of course, it has to be treated somehow. The situation we mentioned, we spoke about this uh, uh, as uh, regards uh, children. So, yes, we have. Uh, so, children must have a, an opportunity to turn to adults. Uh, for um, advice. Uh, secondly, uh, I think that our uh, legislation is uh, developing quite positively in this uh, context. And but of course, there are a number of issues where we, where more dialogue uh, is required between the state and society. We've just discussed uh, the law on uh, personal data protection. I, I think it has to be considered under a slightly different vantage point and also the state initiatives uh, regarding the uh, creation of the national data management systems we discussed well you know this legislative uh, work should be performed uh, in the course of a dialogue with businesses and uh, thirdly uh, all technical uh, opportunities uh, that are available at moment uh, to uh, deal with data that should not lead us to a specific individual should uh, enjoy as much support as possible and should be implemented so as to support the AI businesses and to protect citizens. Thank you. Anandrevna and now Alexander, uh, 30, 40 seconds.
uh, personal data or big data is not the only uh, subject of uh, digital management uh, regulation. Uh, so we haven't gone beyond uh, this subject today, as we have not spoken about other things. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, I think the most important thing is a strict compliance uh, with uh, the rules and laws by all uh, players, by all stakeholders, including uh, foreign uh, businessmen and foreign uh, uh, stakeholders. I will always uh, stick to this and always follow uh, this uh, concept uh, in my work. Any uh, material uh, uh, decisions made in digital sphere should be done so that no mistakes and no and a better understanding could be reached among people because uh, sometimes a vacuum uh, <clears throat> emerges where uh, we fail to explain to people what the reason what is the reason behind this and uh, I'm sure that our legislation uh, is developing dynamically and our legislation is one of the most democratic legislation legislative uh, systems and uh, frameworks in our country but this is uh, uh, we should not, uh, of course, allow that this should be to the detriment of uh, younger people. So we have to approach this in a reasonable manner. So thanks uh, so much to our uh, speakers, Anna Andrema and Alexander Sevich. Thanks so much for uh, this uh, very productive uh, discussion. Unfortunately, we were unable to discuss all the issues um, during this panel discussion uh, because we are running out of time. Hopefully, we will be able to do this in other venues. Thank you very much and goodbye.